we were uh, intrigued, I think. Uh, it, it wasn't the, I think there are some stories of getting emails and being, uh, ours was a little bit more um, uh, from a safe, uh, Toshiko approached us actually at the Architecture League's uh, party um, and she said, yeah. you don't, you're going to get a strange email, <laughs> but it's serious. Uh, it's Ai Weiwei and Herzog and Demeron and they want to do, and she's like, I'm not sure, but it sounds like it's serious. Um, that was six months before we got the email. Yeah. So, so it was still a little strange. And so when, when we received it, it was, um, you know, we were sort of intrigued. And then we had friends who emailed us saying, did you get the email? What is this? And so we said, it seems like it's so, sort of serious. So, um, and we had never been to China. Uh, um, so I think we were, we never questioned doing it because we just wanted, it was an opportunity to get to China. Uh, once we got there, I, yeah, the first three days we were a little bit, why are we here? What is this? Uh, you know, kind of really questioning the whole premise and uh, debating. And uh, um, but then, you know, we got some answers and we sort of understood better what the context was and reassessed and evaluated and sort of decided to to do it. I don't think we were very aware of his work, but we knew who he was, for sure. And we knew his involvement in the stadium and with Jacques and Pierre. And so we were interested. And, you know, I think we were aware of his status within the larger world of Chinese art. And we had seen a big show in Houston um, of contemporary Chinese art, and which was really, really inspiring. And, so, and he was part of it, yeah. part of the artists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But really just to kind of have the involvement of someone within that sphere was really exciting. To see the project, this project within his larger, I think that once you're kind of on the ground over there um, with all the other architects and the developer and the kind of police escorts and the buses and everything, um, it seems it's much bigger, I think, than to than try him. to, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to the extent that I'm not sure he's really controlling it at all. I mean, I think that, uh, um, you know, it's who's using who for you know, and um, I don't I don't think um, he's sort of masterminded this whole thing in a kind of uh, but certainly he's probably also intrigued and it's a, a great experiment that fits within the body of some of his work and uh, you ha you do have a sense of he's just doing it like we most of us are to try it and see what happens and then if it doesn't work out. He's I way where he can sort of negate the whole thing and say that really it's really trash. Uh, well, we, we had met the abstract client and uh, talked with him and his family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, yeah, we, well, our house, we call it, our house is kind of the five bedroom house for the one child policy. So um, we did, we kind of, Rather than imagining a client, we kind of imagined a series of scenarios or situations in which a five-bedroom house could come in handy in a one-child policy land. So um, in a way, we, we created the house in order to create experiences and situations more than kind of trying to model it for yeah. a particular client. And, and we always, this, we sort of had this idea that it wouldn't be maybe just one family, but four, you know, so we have four stairs and four quarters and it's sort of very uh, uh, the large village I mean we just it's hard to conceive of it for us with kind of 10,000 square foot uh, villa for one person although it's probably nice but yeah <laughs> so yeah I think we have like four thousand square foot little houses on top and then room for big events and parties and uh, I mean, or roller skating yeah, or art studios we tried to bring it to you know, imagining that this would be a pretty wealthy Beijing person or, uh, or group of families and they're in the cultural district, uh, interested in art. And um, I mean, to a certain extent, we're always projecting on our clients even when they exist um, So, as architects. So, um, and they project on us, so it was just a little bit more imagination.
Well, I think we were lucky to be in the second phase, yeah. for sure. Um, because I think in the first phase, it was very cold, and so they didn't go outside very much. So they couldn't see the kind of local well, we didn't go out construction. Very much either. No, but it was warmer. And, um, and they also, you know, they had kind of worked a little bit more in the abstract because there were uh, fewer of them and they were kind of right out of the gates. And so we had the um, benefit of seeing the work that they had done and seeing the reaction to the work and also comparing it to um, construction yeah. techniques. The buildings kind of on site were also further along when we visited them and they visited too. So um, we did definitely, it was definitely in our minds a lot. I think the, when we got back, we sort of clearly, we didn't want to, oh, this is our chance to be, build a house, we're going to build the craziest house ever. It was more, within this context, what could we do that would be exciting for us? And we said, you know, why don't we try really a square? <laughs> I mean, the site is square, it was a, we, we realized it was a proportion of the Villa Savoie footprint, and I mean, there were so many things that we could engage and and yet keep it very simple, um, uh, not in terms of the space, but in terms of the detailing. Um, in our mind, it would be something that they could easily, not easily, they would, you know. I mean, you still have a risk of missing where the, you know, pipes come in the bathroom. Yeah. The, the we actually found that almost every square building. Is yeah. It's about yeah. the same size. Yeah. So there was a sense of <laughs> this is an opportunity to explore this particular, you know, a villa in a, kind of, that resonates with the tradition of villas, or um, without it being uh, super muscle, um, you know, formally. Right. Which I don't think we really do in general. <laughs> no. Actually, good. I think. Uh, it kind of became more and more normal. Like the second trip was more normal than the first trip, and the, uh, to the extent that it was almost boring. Um, we're we're still in in the kind of a question mark. You know, what is really going to happen? How is it going to get built? Uh, is it going to be interesting? Uh, who's going to visit? I mean, it's it, it is really a kind of a, it feels like an experiment, or maybe it does for us because we don't really know so well uh, um, what's going on in particular in, Mo in Mongolia and the kind of, um, so we're just kind of curious. Uh, but then yeah, but it's been a, it was a fantastic experience. I mean, I think just simply being there with a hundred young architects from around the world was really That was really amazing. the best And, part, and yeah. I think that people really did good work and it, just to see all the projects and the houses and to spend so much time because we're stuck in this hotel for days on end, so just looking at the projects and talking about them, and, um, you know, meeting old friends from our European days and making new friends and meeting yeah. heroes. And, and then it, it also sort of undermines cliches, so about where American, so-called American architecture might be relative to Swiss, you know, or relative to uh, Mexican and Latin. And I mean, it, there were kind of these nice. Uh, crossings of people also kind of, um, yeah, throwing preconceived ideas that it's not, you know, uh, right. you, you can't do these broad strokes. And um, there were really good exchanges, I think, uh, in terms of uh, discussion. And, yeah. I mean, that's all we did. Like, we just hung out in the hallway and kind of talked about random things and then turned around and there'll be a, a model or, and be like, oh, well, did you see this one? I think that really was interesting. Yeah. Well, that was one of our main comments after the, seeing the first phase, was that they really ignored the, the, the site plan, the master plan. And um, having done a few master plans ourselves, we thought one of the most important things would be to, Which always get ignored. Yeah, which always <laughs> get ignored. So we thought we would be the one house that stayed on their, their plot, which we did. Um, but I think that... Yeah, I, I, I think there was too much chaos in the first group, and I think as they did their CDs, they also pulled back a little bit. Um, and we, we, it, it kind of brought out what was interesting and good about the Highway Ways Master Plan, which is that it's, you know, it's a subdivision in certain ways, but it's extremely dense. Um, and he had kind of configured 
the houses so that there was a kind of good proportion of space around them, yeah. uh, or uh, in terms of the siding, and so. And also, I think there's, I mean, when you only had, what was the first phase? 24. 24 on the site, it looked really strange because you could recognize the objects. Um, but then when it got filled with a hundred different houses, it just becomes a field again. And so it sort of starts to work again. So that was also great um, to see to yeah. see that in the end. It just, your eye kind of, you see kind of density and sort of heights and rather than sort of ob objects. Yeah, sure. I mean, I <laughs> no, I don't yes. know. I yes. <laughs> well, I mean, I think that it depends wh which part. I think the idea of a community of villas and houses happens everywhere. You know, uh, it happens in Las Vegas, uh, as seaside somehow is. You know, uh, I mean, it's it's not un uncommon. Far from that, is kind of almost an American model. Um, I think uh, in terms of getting architects involved. Um, the Sagaponic was a, sort of a smaller example, but it's sort of a, a little neighborhood and they invited a few uh, architects to build. Now the scale is very Chinese, you know, a hundred arch young architects, unknown uh, or not so known. And All inside at the same time. Yeah, this, yeah. this sort of uh, ambition, I think, is currently very, very Chinese, it's sort of like we can do it. You know, the funny thing is that actually it seems like a big important project, but it's a drop. It's so small relative to everything that's happening in Ordos and in Inner Mongolia and in China that I'm not sure actually. Uh, because the, the 100 villas is really a part of a larger master plan, which we don't know very little about, which is next to a huge new city getting built for 500,000 people. Um, so on that scale, which is you know within the larger, uh, on that scale, it's we feel very small. But yeah. everybody's bringing ideas, and uh, it's gonna, if it's done well, it's gonna push building knowledge and uh, different ways of living and interacting, and and so, and that's the positive side. I think that there will be an impact. I think that in the same way that the art in this museum is even though the museum is not, you know, the best built or whatever, is, is I think, quite significant. So um, getting a hundred architects to contribute, uh, even though it's very small, it might kind of resonate. <laughs> build a city, you know. <laughs> having some weird dreams, right, lately, so. <laughs> Like a villa in Mongolia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, scale. We are starving for scale. I mean, really, uh, just you know, and uh, you know, positive scale. Just kind of, um, I, I think we'd love to get involved in one of those uh, more um, rethinking living at a sort of. Um, ecological le level, like these cities that are trying to rethink. I mean, and there aren't that many, but there are some experiments. I mean, we would love someone to come to us and say, hey, look, at there's a the development, and I'm interested in rethinking how we could live to uh, um, to live better. I think that would be exciting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just just one utopia would do us. <laughs> I think. <laughs> a real one. Yeah, yeah, just a built utopia.